Hello everybody, this is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today, our topic is what type of entrepreneur are you? Yeah, you know, I hear all kinds of buzzwords about this, Tracy. There's solopreneur, mompreneur, want to bepreneur, I guess wantopreneur is the correct term, lifestylepreneur. There's a new one, passivepreneur, which I've only just heard about recently. What about all these buzz terms? Well, actually, I want to know what you're telling me. I mean, are you telling me uh, what kind of business you're in, what your market is, what your size is? Mm -hmm. Those really aren't telling me what type of entrepreneur you are. Okay, but then what about personality types, like hustler or visionary or strategist or tactician or diplomat? What about these? Well, now you're telling me what your strengths are, Mm -hmm. your personality strengths. Mm -hmm. You're not telling me if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur and what type of entrepreneur you are. You're only telling me what your strengths are and what you need to work on. So what if I'm an advisor? What if I'm a leader? Does that help? What if I am a Mm -hmm. doer or creator or an artist? Well, now you're talking to me about your skill sets. You still haven't told me what type of entrepreneur you are. Hmm. So how do I define what kind of entrepreneur I am? What's the definition we should be going after? Okay. These are all great. You've told me your skill sets. You've told me your strongest personality traits. Mm -hmm. But how does this tell you what kind of business to build? How does this tell me if you're going to be successful? Hmm. I mean, anyone can be an entrepreneur if they're willing to work at it and learn the skills. It's all skills. I mean, honestly, any personality type can be an entrepreneur unless you're one of those people that, you know, would faint if you had to speak to a total stranger. Other than that, you can learn to be an entrepreneur. Sometimes I feel like I might faint. I've never actually met someone like that. (laughs) But I have met people who think they're like that. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is that what kind of entrepreneur you are in part depends upon your skills and upon your personality type, but it really depends more on your motive, right? Yeah, it really does. If you have the motive to be an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you can learn any of the skills that you need. Okay, so what I hear you saying is that, yes, being an entrepreneur in part depends upon your skill set, in part can depend upon your personality, but it really depends upon your motive, first and foremost. Is that fair to say? I would say that that is very fair to say. If you're motivated to be an entrepreneur, you can develop any of the skill sets you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, personality is somewhat ingrained, and sure, there are some personality types that it's just going to come a little more natural to them than to others, but anyone can be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The question is, you know, do you really want to build something from nothing? Do you have the desire for more for more sake? Right, right. You know? Yeah. Um, do you want to be your own boss? Mm-hmm. Do you want to own your job? What kind of business do you want to operate? Yeah. Uh, you know, some people are happier staying small and local, like um, a service provider or a freelancer or maybe a shopkeeper. Right. Other people want to build something a little bit bigger. Maybe they want to do a franchise or right. network marketing where, you know, the business systems and the marketing are kind of provided for them and they kind of have a clear path to income right maybe you're happier there right or maybe you're more interested in like building a really big business you know something Mm -hmm. where you're going to change things socially disrupt an industry you know you just want to build something way bigger than yourself you want to leave a legacy Mm -hmm. everybody Mm -hmm. has a different motivation motivation Well, and I think I was going to dovetail on that, the motivation piece, especially when we talk about do we want to build a business that changes the world. In part, I think that also depends on what is important to you personally in your personal life. We're not necessarily just talking business, but what are your values and what kind of change do you want to see in the world if that's what you're basing your business on. You know, I do know of some small businesses that are founded on a need that people, I was just telling you before we started taping that um, I've noticed some small businesses that are founded on a very specific need 
it's not necessarily a life-changing or world-changing business, but those can grow into those kinds of businesses that can affect the world. True. Yeah. And the thing about it is, even if you want to change the world, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a business that changes the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could take the Bill Gates approach and you could build a great piece of software that makes billions of dollars and you right. can use your billions of dollars to change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you want to create change in the world doesn't necessarily mean that your business has to. Sometimes it's better to make the money to create a change in the world. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yes, values, motivation, all of those things really affect whether or not someone is going to become an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and whether they're going to succeed because those are deep down drivers. Right. Yes. So how do I define entrepreneur? To me, it's much more technical. You know, being a consultant and a business coach, what I want to know is what kind of business do you operate I really like the way Robert Kiyosaki breaks it down in his cash flow quadrant. It's just really clean, precise, to the point. It's like, are you self-employed? Mm -hmm. In other words, do you own your job? Right. Do you do the majority of the work? Right. Are you the person who does the action that creates the revenue? Right. And in that case, you're really trading dollars for hours is what you're saying. You're just True. not doing it for somebody else. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just like, you know, a lot of times they define an, I mean, an entrepreneur as a doer. Right, right. right. Okay, basically, yeah. that means you're the self-employed person. You would rather be doing the work. Right. And if that's what makes you happy, mm -hmm. Go more for poverty. It. Right. Go for it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what would we it, call those kinds of entrepreneurs? I would say that's a freelancer, that's a mompreneur, a solopreneur. Yeah, those yeah. are good examples. Mm -hmm. I mean... Anybody that really service industry really leads itself towards that more. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I've even I've seen situations where like shopkeepers are even you know solopreneurs and they're doing the majority of the work. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been to like small business where literally they put a uh, sign on the door back in five minutes when they got to go pee right. because they're <laughs> the only person I, I've there. I've seen that as well, and I've waited those yeah. five minutes to get into that store. <laughs> Exactly. If be you're there, providing right? something that's unique enough yeah. that yeah. it's going to cause me to wait that five minutes, right. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, beautician. There's there's a whole gamut. There's probably more people, business owners that fall into that category than right. any other. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's a good category. I'm not going to say it's a bad category. Right. It has its limitations because you can only produce as much income as you. Can produce. Exactly. That's why I said earlier we're trading dollars for hours. And this would be a good time, actually. Well, after people watch this episode, they should refer to the episode that we did about growth, leverage, and scale because those, there we go much more deeply into trading dollars for hours versus building a business that can scale where you're putting in some work and some time, but your revenue is not dependent upon that like it is when you trade your dollars for hours. So check out the growth, leverage, and scale episode. We're going to link to that. Just a little plug. <laughs> sure. What about, what about business owners? So we've got self-employed, the freelancer, mompreneur, etc. I see a business right. owner as, as providing a service, of course, that produces income, but you, you more spend your time strategizing and you may employ people. Yeah, a mm -hmm. business owner is, they're still providing that product or that service just right. like a solo, I mean, a uh, yeah, self-employed person is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But instead, they employ people to do the work that generates income. Right. And yeah, you're right. Most of the time, they're spending their time just strategizing how to grow the business, how to bring in more mm -hmm. sales. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, quite often, sales, you know, business owners have sales teams. Yeah. So... I say they have a tendency to spend the majority of their time on things like management, whether it's managing people, right. managing sales, managing marketing, managing mm -hmm. all aspects of the business, but actually the work. Right. So let's take something really simple. Let's take a plumber, for example. Now, there are a lot of what I call self-employed plumbers. Mm -hmm. They pick up the phone, person has a problem, they drive to their house, right. they fix the plumbing, they provide a bill, they generate income. Yeah. And then 
in the evening or on the weekends or whatever, they work on marketing and all the other things that a right. business owner works on from nine to five. Right, right. So, whereas a business owner can still be in the plumbing business, but he's never going to go out and actually do the plumbing. Right. You're really talking about someone who is in the weeds doing the actual work of the business versus someone who operates at a, a higher level. And I don't mean higher as in necessarily better or superior, but higher as in more of an overview, strategy, managing the business. And they may do some of the work, maybe if needed sometimes, but they're really operating at that level that drives the business rather than does the specific work of the business. Yeah. yeah, and there is a different level you can attain. I mean, a self-employed plumber mm -hmm. can possibly make six figures a year. Yep. He's going to work hard to do it. That's true. But a owner of a plumbing business can make in the millions of dollars. Right. That business can generate millions of dollars of revenue a right. year. Right. There's really only limitation is how often he wants to add employees and, you know, trucks, equipment, that sort of thing. Right. So it can constantly scale. Right. Or he could constantly add leverage and create scale. Right, right. Okay. So, so we've, yeah. got, we've got self-employed, we've got business owner. So let's yeah. go up one and the more. The third level. one that Robert Kiyosaki talks about is an investor. Now this is kind of an interesting one because don't think it means somebody who owns stock in a company. Right. There are a lot of people who yeah. invest, mm -hmm. but they go a step further. They have the product and service and the employees that go out and do the product and service and generate the income, but then they also hire the managers to operate the businesses. Right, right. They function at even a higher level, to use your terminology. Right. They're not even probably thinking about day-to-day -day marketing, day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. They're at a much higher level. They're thinking more like strategic partnerships right. and things of that nature. That's the level that they're operating at. Would you say, that, is, would you say that this kind of uh, an investor role would be more like a CEO? Um, actually, I'd probably even put it more above a CEO. Mm -hmm. um, wow. I'm probably more of like a board of directors type position. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, because a CEO is going to be involved in operations. Now, when you get to a large enterprise type business, that's entirely different. Right, right. Because you have vice presidents of divisions and all such stuff, and the CEO functions over top of them. Exactly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm still right. talking about closely held, quote unquote, small business. Of course, you know, right. that's kind of a ambiguous term anyway because right. here in the United States that means what be less than 100 employees and I think it's up to like 10 million in revenue is a quote unquote small business right. yeah. medium sized business is more than 100 employees but less than 500 mm -hmm. and then it can go up to like 50 million I think it is so you know woo, we're talking about some very yeah. not not strong definitions a lot here. of turf to cover yeah, yeah. okay yeah so I think in my, my to me, my thinking, mm -hmm. um, when I'm working with clients, I have a tendency to think small business is more like a self-employed person. I do too, yeah. Okay. And when I think of more of a medium-sized business, I'm thinking of somebody who functions more as a business owner. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not in the day-to-day -day production side of it. They're managing a business. Right, right, yes. But, you know, some of them, there are some who function in that manner that are still very small. You know, so, yeah, you can't really put a label on people having to do with their revenue size, their employee size. It has more to do with how they operate and how they function to me. Yeah. Okay. And it directly affects, you know, how we work with a client. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell me you're a mompreneur, okay? <laughs> you're a mom. Right. Discuss mom topics. <laughs> okay, you your industry. <laughs> Um, you still haven't told me your size because mompreneurs can have contractors working under them. They can have employees. Yeah. That la that definition, okay, that label is not a definition. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got, we've got self-employed, we've got business owner, we have investor. So, mm -hmm. we want our audience to identify which one they are. 
Why should they do that, though? What's, what is this exercise going to give our viewers and listeners? Well, I think it kind of tells you where, where you are. Um, you know, look at what you do. Mm-hmm. Where do you spend the majority of your time each day? Mm-hmm. That will kind of tell you the quote-unquote level of entrepreneurism you are at. Mm-hmm. I think we, you can move between these, too. A lot of entrepreneurs start out self-employed. And then I would say most entrepreneurs start out as self-employed. Yeah, yeah. And they can move into being a business owner from there. And mm-hmm. that's where the trouble arises a lot of the time. I think we should do another episode about that because I think some people get stuck between the I'm working on the, the work of the business versus I'm managing the business. A lot of people have trouble with that, that transition, excuse me. So I think it might be worth exploring that as a topic in the future. <laughs> well, you know, you, you hear a lot of your business gurus talk about you need to spend your time working on the business, uh-huh. not in the business. Right. Great advice. Yeah. Now teach somebody how to do that. Right, 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 right. Some people don't even know how to work on their business. That's true. That's true. That's kind of some of the more higher level topics that we cover because, mm-hmm. you know, that's the clientele that we work with. Right. So I guess that's where our thinking on it falls quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it doesn't do you any good to define yourself, to be honest with you. Hmm. You know, when I go in and I start working with somebody, first thing I want to know is, like, what's, what's their level? Are they self-employed? Are they business owner? Are they investor? Right. Boom. Right. Then I want to know the size of their business. I want to know their industry, you know. There's so many variables in there mm-hmm. that I, but you know, I get kind of irritated when they give them these stupid penure labels. <laughs> <laughs> You're you mean, not telling me anything. If you, you call me up and go, I need help. I am a solo penure, right? <laughs> so you're one man operation, okay? But to it be fair, your size. No, your, it doesn't. Yep. But- to be fair, these labels get thrown around so much, and most of the articles and even the podcasts and other business shows that I'm aware of, that I listen to, they use these labels nonstop. And so you kind of can't really fault people for thinking that these are the definitions I need to be using because that's what's given me by the industry, right? So we want you to think of this in a little bit different way. I mean, that label can tell you something, but it's not going to tell a person like Tracy or myself it's not going to give us any good information that we can use to help you out in your business. So that's why we want you to think about what kind of an entrepreneur are you, not just give yourself a label or think about your skill set, but how do you fit into your business? How do you work on your business? That's, that's when we can help you. Yeah. Would you agree? <laughs> and, and knowing where you fall in these also can let you more accurately look at how to start growing and how to start exactly. gaining skill sets and all Right. To get to the next level, if that's right. what you want to do. Yeah. But you know, think about it. If I started labeling you, okay. <laughs> Please don't. Well, I could say, life, I could say you're a lifestyle entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Well, in one of your endeavors, I can say you're a solo entrepreneur. Yeah, that's true. I could say you're a media entrepreneur. <laughs> hey, I like that one. Media entrepreneur. <laughs> that almost sounds like media mogul. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can label you like crazy, but you know what? Doesn't change exactly who you are. Exactly. Yeah. Those are just some quote unquote characteristics. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, lifestyle entrepreneur. Am I referring to the fact that you have a lifestyle business or am I referring to the fact that you're building your business to support a lifestyle? I mean, you could even say, I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know? And, you know, a lot of people say, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. But think about this. Yeah, I have multiple businesses. In some of them, I'm an investor. Right. Some of them, I'm a business owner. And like this one right now, you know, we're in a somewhat of a startup stage. So honestly, I'm almost functioning like a self-employed person because I'm doing a lot more of the work than I normally would. Right. In in the so Mm -hmm. you can't define me with these buzzwords. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and that's a good point about the difference between working on a lifestyle business where that's your business and working on a business to support a lifestyle. So all of these definitions can get a little bit confusing and they, like I said, don't give us enough information if you need help or need to grow. That's true. Yeah. The, the advice I want to give anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur is do it. Mm-hmm. It's great. 
Yeah. It'll stretch you in ways you never imagined. Mm -hmm. It will give you more confidence. You'll learn more. It's just an amazing experience. Yeah. But you have to go into it open-minded. You have to go into it knowing there's no way I'm going to know everything I need to know. And this is a constant learning and growing process. Yeah. I have been an entrepreneur for 32 years. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that out loud, should I? <laughs> and I learn something new every day. Yeah. And, you know, I seek out information every day. Yeah. And there's another good point and another good topic we could explore. How do you seek out that new information every day, especially if you are the self-employed type of entrepreneur where you're working in the business? And I will use myself as an example because with my lifestyle business or even my media empire, <laughs> I, I literally do the work all the time. I'm shooting. I'm editing my videos. I am working in the business. I am self-employed. So... How do you find time to learn those new things? How do you expose yourself to new information and kind of push yourself up to that next level, if that's what you're going for, and learn those new things, especially if your time is really eaten up by doing the work? Which And I, okay. I like video editing. I love it. I love interviewing people. Obviously, that's part of you know one of my efforts, so I'm not going to give that up. But I realize that I do need to leave room for these other skill sets to flourish and that's that's a struggle for me I'll admit it well there's two things that I tell people all the time number one be aware that you don't know and instead of trying to learn everything do what I call just-in-time learning Google mm -hmm. is like the greatest invention on the face of the earth for this yes when you run into a problem Google yeah and take time to learn that's what I you do. know yeah Whereas a lot of people subscribe to all this stuff and they try to take in all this knowledge, take in all this knowledge. I think that's where this crazy term entrepreneur came in. Uh -huh. It's yeah. kind of like, it's not a negative. It's not criticizing someone. It is someone who's at that point that they haven't gained the confidence to move forward yet. Right. They want to be an entrepreneur, but they're still in the learning, gathering stage. Right. Right. Now, how is that any different than someone who goes to college and gets a degree? Yeah. If you truly are learning and attempting to apply what you learn, right. I am never going to fault someone for being in that stage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fault them for staying in that <laughs> stage. Yes. At some point, you have to move forward and you have to apply and understand that now it's time to have just-in-time learning. Yeah. You know, I do this all the time. I need a piece of software to do something for me. Yeah. What do I do? Get out there and search for it. Right. Then learn to use it. Am I going to learn to use every piece of software, know every piece of software that's out there so that the answer is right here every time I need it? No, that would be insane. <laughs> it would be nice, but it would be crazy. Yeah. I, Google is your friend, and I've extensively used Google for a lot of things to learn on the fly. I mean, I did not know editing. I mean, I go back to editing because that's a great example. The way I learned to edit, here's what happened. I called up a friend of mine who does it professionally and I said, come over one hour, sit with me, show me the, just the least that I need to know just to get an episode done. So he came over and we exchanged dinner for one hour of training. And then after that, so I knew how to get up and running, but after that, of course, all these questions come up like, you know, how do I create this transition or how do I do animated text or whatever it was? That's when Google came into play. I mean, I had like three tabs of Google, <laughs> Googling Adobe Premiere open at all times and was looking at different things. And I taught myself how to do these things. I found some interesting plugins. I found techniques that I wasn't aware of that were, you know, clever shortcuts in Premiere. You just, you have to Google and, you know, use, use what you've got. Use the resources you have. If you have a friend who can help you out with these things, great. If not, you know, your friend is not going to want to have you call them every five minutes when you need to know something. So you really need to become self-sufficient at learning these things as well. Yeah. And another thing that you can do, which is a shortcut that you took, mm -hmm. you can use a friend, you can hire a coach. Yeah. You know, don't try to gain all the knowledge in advance. Have resources available to you. Right. So that when you need them, you can go to them. Yeah. You know, yes, it's much more different difficult for someone who is self-employed because every minute they're spending working on the business, they're not generating revenue directly. 
Mm-hmm. But if you're not working on the business, if you're not setting aside that time to work on the business, right. you're never going to grow past the point you're at. True. I have this conversation too often, way, way, way too often. Yeah. It's, you're right, you don't have any more hours in the day. Yeah. Something's got to sacrifice. So you're going to sacrifice your time with your family, you're going to sacrifice sleep, or you're going to sacrifice a certain amount of revenue Mm -hmm. in order to have time to work on your business and grow your business so that this issue never comes up again. Right. It's like taking one step back so that you can take two steps forward. Exactly. You choose what you're going to sacrifice. But I find in most cases the easiest thing to sacrifice is a little bit of revenue. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not going to give up my sleep. It, I don't get enough as it is, so <laughs> that's non-negotiable. <laughs> okay, well, I think this has been a, a great episode. I think we've given people a lot of food for thought. They may not think of these labels in the same way again, and that's that's our goal, I think, is to get people thinking beyond the labels, to think about yeah. how they relate to their business. Mm-hmm. You know, if you walk up to me and say, I'm in waste removal, <laughs> Hey, I don't have a clue what you do. Right, right. Are you the manager? I know what industry you? you're in. Right. I have no idea how big your business is. I don't know how you operate your business. I know nothing about you. Yeah. I know what industry you operate in. Labels are meaningless. Understand where you are in the levels of entrepreneurism. That will do more to define you and teach you how to grow. Yeah. And one last thing I want to say about entrepreneurism. hmm And I've probably said it a million times in every episode. I find people that think there has to be a learning process, such as a college education. You have to be taught. But today, with Google and all the how-to videos on YouTube and everything, you can teach yourself virtually any skill set. I taught myself how to program four different languages. You taught yourself how to edit videos. Mm -hmm. Unless you're getting into something, honestly, I'm not even going to say that. I bet I can watch enough and read enough and all on open heart surgery. I, I would feel sorry for the person on the table that would <laughs> them be my first attempt. But <laughs> at some point, with enough practice right, right. and enough self-education, I think you can learn to do anything. I really do. You better get some good malpractice insurance. Don't apply it on other people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, if you're going to trust somebody straight out of medical school, would you really want to be their first open heart patient? Oh. No. no. Let's hope I don't ever have to have open heart surgery <laughs> at all. But <laughs> I don't think you will with your lifestyle. No, probably not. I eat pretty well. But, you know, it, it's, that's the thing. I think you can honestly learn to do anything. You can self-learn today. Mm-hmm. 20 years ago, that would have been much more difficult. Yeah. But today, you can self-learn anything. Yeah. Don't be scared to get out there and go for it. Yeah. And that's just it. Resources. You're not performing yeah. open-heart surgery. <laughs> you know? But you could with me. enough practice. You could. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing. Everything is not that important. Yeah. You know, so you try a certain type of marketing and you fail. Learn from it. Mm -hmm. Change. Yeah. Implement again. Yeah. That's called the. Keep trying, keep trying, trying to get it right. Right. That's called the business success rule, which we also did a video on. It's like you try something, you measure the results, you learn from that result, and you adjust and you try again. So th- this all ties together. You should definitely check out that video, too. We'll link it. Well, you know, I heard, um, who did I hear say this? This is terrible. I am not going to be able to tell you where I got this. Okay. But I heard someone say one time that you're talking about self-learning. It's like mm-hmm. you did not learn to walk by your parents giving you instructions, and then you just stood upright and walked. Right. Right. You attempted to walk, you took a few steps, you fell down, you got up. Yeah. And the thing is, nobody said, oh, you failed three times, don't ever try right. again. <laughs> right. That's why almost everybody in the world can walk. You know, I just had this picture in my mind, as you said that, of a baby Googling how to walk. And they, <laughs> they watch YouTube videos about how to walk. And then they get up and start walking. <laughs> yeah. You didn't learn to talk by going and sitting in classes. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't need formal instruction. Yeah. Just do it. Learn as you go. Yeah. Understand that not everything is going to work, and that is not the end of the world. You were not performing open heart surgery. Right. You didn't kill somebody. You know, just just do. Yeah. Good. To quote Mikey. <laughs> good, good, good. Good stuff. All right, so we're going to quit um, telling you to get out there and get your button gear, and <laughs> we're going to conclude this for today episode. anyway. For today, we'll we'll tell you that again next week. But <laughs> so the question for today is: We would like to hear where do you fall on the levels of entrepreneurship? Yeah. But even more important, where do you want to be? Yeah. Self. Are you self-employed? Business owner or investor? Yeah. And are you self-employed? But you want to be a business owner? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're self-employed and your ultimate goal is to be the investor. Right. You know, let us know. And, you know, you can throw in those uh, panors <laughs> and give us your labels and tell us what your personality strengths and your skill set strengths are. Yeah. We would like to know. Yeah, it's helpful. It's helpful. Yeah. It's but, interesting, but it's not the crucial information we're looking for here. Right. So... If you are watching the video, put it in the comments below. And if you're listening to one of the podcast, head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and you can leave a comment on this episode or, you know, there's plenty of places on the website where you can get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to like this video. Please share this video if it's been helpful for you. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a review. We would love it if you did that. We always read your feedback, and it will help us to become more visible on iTunes so that we can help more people like you grow their self-employed business or investment process. <laughs> so we'll see you on the next episode.